Uh, well, expect you back about nine o'clock, Miss Hudson. It's just tricky nine now, Dr. Watson. I have a beautiful roast beef in the oven, and I don't want it to burn. Uh, well, I'm sure it'll be delicious whatever time you have, Mrs. Hudson. I'm worried about Mr. Holmes. I fear he's greatly neglecting his uh, health. Yes, oh, I quite agree. He keeps working so very hard, and he eats to nothing. Maybe it'd be wise for him to see a doctor. Oh, I think he's had enough of doctors with needs his fellow lodger. A doctor like you deserves more obedient patients. Housekeeper like you, Mrs. Hudson, this is master who can appreciate looking. What's the matter? You appreciate it, don't you? I certainly do, if that's any conversation to you. <laughs> what was that?
should bring a hot hit at. I can help them get some more. Oh, no. It's my egg. It's down in your car. Oh, it circumstances whatsoever. There was anybody to be allowed in here without my express permission. But you looked as though you were dying. No acceptance made, Watson. Oh, good heaven, I wrote Recently, waiting about for all the ships coming from Benghazi. Oh, an old friend? Who? Moriarty. And I intend to find out why. But Holmes, we all know that Moriarty is the greatest criminal in the country. Why don't the police do something about him? Care, Watson, it should ever come to the professor's ears that you call him a criminal. You may very well find yourself sued for slander. Oh, oh no. Knowing and proving something are two very different matters, Watson. I need hard to find you. It's my duty to bring him to justice. How do you propose to do that? With help of the Times. Everything I could possibly require was in the Times. It is best informed the most reliable paper in the world. Oh, yes. The most reliable. Now what? What is the purpose of the Times? Quite a supply of information. Exactly. Also to advertise. That's why the advertisements are on the front page. So there's no sense of sensational headlines to whet the reader's appetite. And then after the advertisements, what is the next most important thing? Oh, the thoughts page. Brilliant, Watson. The weather, the arts, you, shipping news, and finally, yes, finally, politics. The time is also the least obvious and the most efficient weapon that a man could possibly have. Now, pick up that dagger. The dagger? Yes, so pick up. All right, and now what am I supposed to do? Try and hit me. Hit you? Are you feeling yourself Oh, dead? come along, Watson. There's nothing to worry about. You won't hurt me. Come along. No, I can't. Really? Very well. Then drive right from over there. Now, here. Come on. Nothing to worry about, about old man. Uh, oh, I'll tear your dressing gown, you know. Watson, for the last time. Here. On guard. All right. If you says. Keep the dinner warm, Hudson. Watson, get the morphine. Quick. <gasps> Mrs. Hudson, be good enough to telephone Scotland as quickly as you can. Ask for Inspector Cooper and tell him I want him here immediately. Of course, Mr. Holmes. Immediately. Jenkins. Who did this? Who did this to you?
Why, you are, Mr. Holmes. How am I going too far, Vector? I find a man stabbed to death on my doorstep, so quite naturally I sent for you. Oh, we know all about this chip. He served at least 12 senses in prison. I have no sympathy with reformers. He may not have been a particularly respectable member of the community, Inspector, but he was of considerable help to us and next to him. Indeed. I'm sure you did, Holmes, but what's particularly interesting is that your private investigation has now been fatal to him. That's very serious accusation. Are you any chance proposing to arrest me on a charge of murder? Scott Yard has often requested your help, as you know, Mr. Holmes. However, this no request has been made. Under no circumstances can we sanction your undertaking private investigations without having received official authorization. I'm not employed by Scott Yard, Inspector. I'm a private citizen. I do what I believe to be right, and I'm to accept all responsibility for it. This country has a police force and a legal system for its citizens' protection. Nobody has the right to take the law into his own hands, Holmes. You can only stand after a crime being committed. I, on the other hand, do my very best to prevent for it takes place. Hmm. You just proved how capable you are. For fighting your priority, and I propose to continue it with or without such a Scotland Yard. We would be more than pleased to operate, Holmes, if you would only inform us of your activity. That's precisely what I'm doing. Professor Moriarty must be brought to justice. <laughs> Here we go. Ken Holmes, uh, you know, the last, last time you lectured me about that, uh, professor of yours, I finally decided I had to pay him a personal visit. We had a most interesting conversation. About his criminal activity? No. About archaeology. Uh-huh. So you're an archaeologist, who? Mm, I confess I didn't understand a word, but the professor is excellent. Sure. You've been in his house, yes? Extraordinary. Magnificent things, isn't it? Do you ever stop to ask yourself we can fall on the salary of a university professor? Mm. He comes from a wealthy family. The professor's brother is a station master in the West Country. He himself came to London. He didn't have a pain in his pocket, and yet he manages to spend at least ten thousand pounds a year. Where do you suppose it comes from, Inspector? <laughs> from forgery, robbery, and burglary, and murder. Not intend to prove it. I think it invites you to learn that Professor Moriarty happens be a list this year of those to be knighted. Would you accuse Sir James Moriarty of murder, Mr. Holmes? It would give me the very greatest pleasure, Inspector, to see the knight hanged. Take my warning, Holmes. You do not stand for the law. We do. You're welcome to do so, Inspector. Good day. Good day. Cooper isn't really a bad detective, Watson. Just lacks imagination. Why do you suppose Jenkins was killed? Why he was coming here? He was bringing me some information. It must have been pretty important information if somebody was prepared to kill him with it. It was. He tried to tell me something before he died. Yeah. His last word was hair, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But then he did something strange with his hand. I've got it. Watson, come around here. Pick the lamp around so that the light shines on my hands. That's it. Now look at the wall. Look at the shadow. What does that make you think of? A bird. Go on. What kind of a bird? My pretty large. You're getting warm. An eagle. That's it. A hare and an eagle. A hare and an eagle. And what does that remind you of, Watson? A pub house. Brilliant, my dear fellow. Positively brilliant. George, when does your ship leave again? Let's sit here, Watson. Huh? Oh. What are we supposed to do in the way that patients want things? Well, I suppose we can have a drink or something. Oh, yeah, very well. Yes, gentlemen? Two half pints of bitter, please. Uh. Well, I wonder why Jenkins sent us here. That's what you to find out, my boy. Uh, uh, strange atmosphere in this place. Mm. You have time to be here. To those uh, men over there, the sailors from the Thesia. If I remember correctly, our professor is more interested in the Thesia. Oh, you mean the ship of Benghazi? Precisely. Which room are they in? Number four. Uh, 
Wait a minute. I, I say. Well, then he said he had to bring his mother along. And after all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello there, sweetheart. Hello. How about a little drink? Do do I know you? Ah, and I had to be convinced that in a hurry. Uh, yes, I'm quite sure. <laughs> What'll you drink? I'm partial to champagne. Puts me in the mood. To... Well, you, you have what you wish. Yes, or order anything you wish. You know, handsome, you're a real gent. I absolutely adore men who shy, especially at your age. Oh, I'm... I'm a man. Oh? All of the real men are already married, dearie. The ones who aren't are always the ones that nobody wants around. <laughs> Champagne. Champagne. Must have been a very lively lady. <laughs> I feel like inviting in you. Mm. My mother is in the hospital. But tell me she needs an operation. Maybe you can help me. Certainly. You really mean it? Of course. Oh. I'm a doctor. Uh. I'm a doctor for nothing. Now, can you work too if you like. <laughs> My goodness, you're a doctor. I'm a spy. I watch people, and I follow people, and I listen, and keep Come along, Watson, come along. Oh, hello. Uh, I, we just, uh, 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 we're going. We're going to listen at a chimney. What did you say? We're going to listen at a chimney. Quite logical, sir. Oh, yes, 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 of course. We're going to listen at a chimney. I hope you're satisfied with your room, Samuel. Yes, it's quite comfortable. In comparison to the one I spent the last year in, that is. I've been waiting for you for a week. If I had my way, I would have come back to London over six years ago, Professor. It's no fun being cooped up in prison and eat. With humility. There were six long years. From morning to night, keep you working on road construction. The sweltering heat. Where is Harrison? Dead. Oh, it wasn't he on the face here. Yeah. Truly. One evening he tried to push me overboard, but he spun the neck and fell overboard himself. You must have given him a little assistance. Yes, of course. After all, I was made to fling myself. It was my life for his. <laughs> He's no less. Ha ha ha. Well, well, poor old Harrison. Samuel, I've located the man we're looking for. The man I'm looking for? Hurry! Really? Just one moment. First, we have things to discuss. from that chain gang. I don't pay those six years. I suppose I have no choice. Like, all right, what are the plans? Let me get rid of Blackburn first, and then you do your job. Have you any idea you're up? Where is Blackburn? In a house outside of London. It's not far from... Why?
Watson, you had a little joke. Come on. <laughs> there was somebody listening. The police? I don't doubt it. Well, Holmes, never take a clumsy old doctor along with you. I got the information I quite The burn? Well, now there's been one murder. Oh, no, two. One of the sailors on board the face was stabbed at the bottom of a board. Uh, how do you know that? Don't you read the Times, Watson? I often advise you to do so when you want to know anything. Moriarty was a man named Blackburn who lives in the country. He sent for two men from Africa, and one of them killed the other one. The question is, what is he after? Well, hadn't we better turn the whole case over to Scotland Yard? What case? The Jenkins case, they know all about that one. The Blackburn case, which hasn't happened yet. And the Moriarty case, which they refused to leave. Let's go. Where are we going? To the offices of the Times. Is your breakfast? Oh, sorry, Mrs. Hudson, but we'll be back for lunch. Thank you. Just what we're looking for. We have to find out where Moriarty was in Egypt, Watson. Huh. Oh, miss. Would you please bring me volume 105? One moment, I'll get it. Thank you. Show soon, no. Holmes, couldn't you be a, a little less mysterious? You know my methods, Watson. English and Egyptian archaeologists have discovered two containing treasure. The two is believed to be that of Cleopatra. Professor Moriarty, eminent English archaeologist. Yes, go on, well, go on, Holmes. Thefts of priceless treasure. Following the reported theft of priceless treasures from tomb, two English and Egyptians in Harrison and Sanders have been arrested. A third, Peter Blackburn, has appeared at the same time a casket of golden press stones containing a golden necklace which belonged to Cleopatra herself. What's the we have to have another murder? Holmes, I just don't know what you're talking about. This isn't about to be lost, man. Uh, where are we going now? To a delightful Hertfordshire village by the name of Barnet. A Hertfordshire village? Peter's gun. He's hunting him. He should be stopped. If we don't stop, stop him, we're letting a madman run wild. He's just his will. And why doesn't he call the police if his life's threatened? Threatened by whom? Why doesn't he tell us? I have no idea. Why don't you let me take you away? He's my husband. I can't just run away as if I were free. No, but there's another way out. You don't owe Peter anything. His fears have killed his love for you, and besides, he's dangerous. I never forgive myself for anything, have you? What are we to do?
I'll be there right away. Peter Burr is dead. His head is completely shattered. Shattered close range, don't you know? We have everything as we found it until the police in Scotland got gone. Inspector Cooper, telephone to say if you went along. By all means, let's leave everything to Inspector Cooper. Where were you, Miss Blackburn? Is dead. I was in my room. I was doing some reading before turning in. Then I heard a shot and I ran downstairs. Was the door open? No. Uh-huh. The murderer broke into the window. He stuck a bit of high paper on the pane so the piece of glass wouldn't make it any noise. It's unquestionably a professional job. What did you find about the room, Mr. King? That. Did you see anyone running away? No, I didn't. Where was Mrs. Blackburn? Up in a room. I told her to stay there because I didn't want to see this. Do you think he did suicide? Well, that end of glass was pushed in from outside. The traces of blood here, the murderer must have stepped in it. And that leaves no doubt whatsoever. The Blackburn, surprised burglar, was killed. Culver then ran away, leaving the murder weapon behind. <laughs> Scotland Yard will surely make the same deduction. It's not quite as simple as Inspector. It was rehashing that picture that I was here today. That's why the hammer was here. Why did the intruder leave this room? It appears to be a value. I guess he was frightened and overlooked it. Where's Mr. Blackburn now? She's upstairs. She's terribly upset, naturally. No doubt, Inspector. Mr. Crow takes statement. But why did the killer take Blackburn's wedding ring? Maybe he didn't wear one. Oh, that's right. I can't remember Peter wearing a wedding ring. No. Then I just sent the butler. Ask the butler to come here. Oh, there you are. Do you recall whether Mr. Blackburn wore his wedding ring above or below a serpent ring? Hmm? Below a serpent, sir. You're white. I would swear to it. We'll see what the inspector makes of that. Watson, I seem to remember some very interesting trees in the garden. I'd rather have to take a closer look at what about you? Oh, yes. Yes. If you're looking for trees, they're right in front of you. That was up in yard. Yes. Inspector Cooper, now, don't you want to see him? No, not yet. Who do you suppose that is? It looks remarkably like a grave. Grave? That's not large enough to bury a dog. Be careful, Watson. Don't spoil the footprints. Leave that to the inspector. How could possibly be buried there? Clothes. Very old clothes. Old clothes? <laughs> he must have tried to defend himself with the hammer. Precisely, inspector. Oh, the deduction. Ah, uh, so you knew about this murder too, Mr. Holmes? No. No. But I suspected that it would, would occur. Were you acquainted with the deceased? I was not. I heard him mentioned for the first time quite recently. By whom? By the distinguished archaeologist whose name is Moriarty. Ah, so you naturally assume that he's a murderer. I'm afraid it's not quite as simple as all that. Effect. The gentleman in question has a perfect alibi. Professor Moriarty, the famous archaeologist, who delivered a lecture on Egyptian antiquities at 8 o'clock tonight. At the pen club. And Blackburn was killed between 9 and 10 o'clock. Correct. So it cannot possibly be more empty. The lecture is over at 11. Well, we know that Blackburn was murdered before 11. Have you any big ideas? I never deliver theory in history without all the facts at my disposal. Mrs. Blackburn, you say that your husband feared for his life. Is that correct? You have no... such a question. In I was speaking to Mrs. Blackburn. I have your answer. I love Where are you going? He's run after There's somebody out there. I saw him too. Oh, oh why didn't Peter confide in us? Looks like it's supposed to be real after all. What? 
Watson. They broke my arm. What's going on? Did you catch it? Watson nearly caught me. It's ridiculous. Searching all in the dock. Inspector, will you please alert the police throughout this district and that of St. Albans to block all the roads and put guard at the railway stations? Would you please give me your right shoe, Mr. King? What? Your right shoe, Mr. King. Thank you. Don't you agree, Mr. Holmes, that these footprints come from the slipper? Oh, undoubtedly. Prince eat the door. I get quite correct. Well, King, I must have stepped in it, I guess, when I went to the door. Really? Wasn't it more likely that you out the pane of the window from the outside to make it look like a burglary and returned inside to do the murder? How oh, could possibly have done such a crime? That's what we should see. Uh, one moment, Inspector. I'll have to ask you please not to interfere in this, Mr. Holmes. I may wish to point out. The footprints do not stop at door. Mr. King's footprints lead to a heap of earth over there. Why did you bury these garments and to whom do they belong? Mrs. Blackburn, I trust uh, that you can furnish me the information that Mr. King will not. Mrs. Blackburn had nothing to do with it. Mrs. Blackburn, Mr. King, will you please follow me? I am forced to take both to London with me, I'm afraid. You have indeed reconstructed the case correctly, Inspector. My compliments on your perspicacity. And now perhaps Mrs. Blackburn will be good enough to tell you what really happened. I... Well, I had just turned the light off when... Who is he? 